All right. I think we are live. Awesome. So today we, we have a very special show. We've got our very own Caleb Baptista with us. We're going to be talking about photographing your family during these kind of uncertain times and making really great art, uh, you know, no matter what, no matter what's going on. So we've got a lot of good photos from Kayla. Uh, she's here with us right now. Um, I'm going to switch over real quick now that we got things rolling. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be good. So yeah, thank Yay. you for joining us, Kayla. Of course, thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah. Um, you have a lot of fans in the community, and so it's been really fun to see them like cheer you on. And uh, I know that they've been excited to see you live today. Yeah, they're awesome. Thank yes. you. Yeah. So. So tell us a little bit about where you are from and where what kind of work you you normally shoot before things kind of went topsy turvy in the world. So I actually live in Northwest Florida and I shoot everything. So most of the time like during the summer I do beach sessions and families and then like off season for us I usually do mostly just weddings. So a little bit of everything. Maternity, weddings, family, pretty much everything. Oh, it's great. You have a really, really nice style. It's super clean, uh, super bright and colorful. Um, let me go back to it real quick here so everyone can see. And I just love, um, I love that you're, you're capturing, you're capturing like natural moments. Uh, but it, it looks like you're also very, uh, considerate about like where people are, what they're doing. Um, yeah, kind of the, the environment they're in and the light. Uh, this is wonderful. Um, Thank you. So and it's really inspiring to a lot of people. They they want to know how you are able to make such beautiful photos so consistently. Um, before we really dive into like the specifics of photographing your family in the coronavirus, can you tell us a bit about your process, like how you how you think about your imagery, how you, how you get to this image, for example, because people people love your work. Well, for me, my kids, I would say are a little bit easier for me just because I've been taking photos of them their entire life. So, I mean, they've just pretty much grown up, you know, just my great ideas. And then I just, am like, okay, kids, like we're going to go do it. And it usually is like thrown together just because it's mm -hmm. really hard to photograph your own kids just because you think too much about it and like being on the other side, which is you know, my client side, which is outfits and trying to put everything together is usually, it's really stressful. So I always like try to help my clients on that end. But with my own kids, you know, for me with photographing kids in general, like I don't, I'm not more of like the posed style. Like I don't enjoy just setting kids down and trying to get them to look at me. I feel like all kids, especially my own, they do well in, you know, doing things that they like to do and fun things like this shoot in particular, you know, this was kind of like a last minute throw together styled shoot, but I was like, you know what? My friends have a Volkswagen and my yeah. kids have ice cream. So I'm like, you know what? We're going to do a shoot and I'm not really working right now. So I just thought it would be a really good idea and it all came together really nicely. But like I said, with being posed, I just don't really, I don't pose my kids really at all. I mean, the entire time I really think, it's good to just have them interacting with each other, always moving around. So that's where those images really come from, which is everybody's favorite anyway. You know, the smiling ones are great, but I feel like, yeah, especially for my children, they just do better just, you know, having fun and doing their own thing and glasses, that one right there that you're pointing at. Yes. You know, like my kids are fashionistas. So just giving them like little props like that, the smallest little prop, you know, makes them excited and they love it. So. Yeah, yeah. It, it it it. What I love about your your work is that it's so technically perfect, um, and yet it doesn't feel like really uh, sterile or like constrained. You know, like there's that kind of fine line between I don't know, like what I would say stock photography. Not all yes. stock photography. I do stock photography, but like traditional stock photography where everything's like absolutely perfect, um, and then it comes right. off kind of feeling like fake. Uh, you have like everything perfect and then you're allowing some kind of chaos or like, or like you're allowing them to be themselves inside right. of it. 
Which is funny that you say that because every time I leave a shoot, especially like my husband can say this because every single time I do a shoot, I leave and I'm like, oh my gosh, that was a disaster. Like with my kids, I'm like, I don't even know, you know, why I try with my own kids. Cause it's just so, it's always so stressful. And then they ended up every time, like, especially these, these actually were my favorite images I've ever taken of my kids. And yeah. what I did differently this time than I usually ever do is I did not, I literally did not post them at all. I mean, I know that sounds really crazy because people are probably thinking, well, you have to post them, but really, you know, if you just get like this Volkswagen bus, I just put it in good light. And then I just pretty much let them be themselves, which is jumping in and out of the van. And then I'm just snapping photos in the good light, which is where the van was. And then it all just came together really nicely. You know, I, I just, with them, I'm telling you, I, I don't think I've ever set them down and been like, okay, like let's get this smiling picture, you know? Cause that's really what a lot of people's goals yeah. are during a family session. And that's the opposite of mine. I always, you know, try to explain to parents, you know, especially like we, when we first show up for a family session, I'm like, you've got to get out of the mindset of just, you know, everybody looking at me smiling. I always get those shots, you know, if the kids are doing really yeah. well, but for me and my style, I like the more journalistic, which is kids being themselves doing their own thing. If they look at me and they smile, I get it. It's great. But yeah, when kids are being themselves, that's usually when you get the best images of them anyways. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's like, you've created the conditions for beautiful photography where they can be themselves. What, what was your thinking or your strategy, for example, for getting everything lined up in this photo? Like, like your, like your approach to lighting, lens choice, depth of field. I bet everybody watching really wants to know. So I'm going to dive in with that. Okay. So, well, everybody always asks what lens I use. So this actually was with my 58 1.4. Some of these were with my 51.4 and I believe my 2470. I believe this one is my 51.4. So basically what I did was I just, I knew where the light was, which you always need to know where the light is, especially when you have a big prop, like a Volkswagen bus. Yeah. And um, everybody's always asking me, you know, about backlit and, you know, how are you getting those creamy tones with like backlit photos? Well, I think yeah. the issue is, is that with a lot of people, when they think backlit, they're thinking like the sun needs to be directly behind them. But I always try to make sure it's, all the way to the left or all the way to the right, which right here it's up to the left, like in this tree. So I kind of had okay. a little bit of balance. Um, uh -huh. and I always shoot wide open. So this was at a 1.4. I always shoot at a 1.4. And I know a lot of people don't agree with that, especially when you shoot kids and they're moving around and stuff, but it's pretty brave. Now that I've been doing it for a long time. I feel like I'm able to shoot wide open and it's, you know, sometimes it's perfectly in focus. Sometimes it's not, but that isn't something that I am. I obsess over anyways. I'm not like, okay, we've got to make sure this image is in perfect focus. I mean, those always make good for black and whites anyway. So I just yeah. keep shooting and keep snapping until I get, you know, I know I got the shot. So with them, I just made sure the bus was right. The sun was where I needed yeah. it to be. I set them there and I'm like, all right, girls, you guys hold hands and then just walk towards me. And that was it. And that's how I got the shot. Super easy. That's awesome. Yeah. Can, can you see this red arrow that I'm putting on your photo? Yes. Okay. Tell me when it's pointing at the sun, where the sun is or where it was. Okay. The sun is all the way at the top to the oh. left. And there's a huge tree right there. I think I, I don't think you have any of them pulled up, but there's okay, a tree so right there too. That's in the top. So I always try to make like sure right it's up here. to the left or the right, never directly behind them. And uh -huh. that way it's not, too bright, like the sun flares. You got to be very weird about those sun flares because that's when okay. you start getting the weird rainbows and stuff. Yeah. So that this is interesting. Like what you you point and do I have this right? Is this right on the screen? I yes, don't know if my left there. is yep, your it's left. like right there to the left. Yep. Because you can see okay. it in my girl's hair right there because that's what I like. Like I like okay. The sun flares are okay too, but I really like to get the sun, you know, to the side so that it's like in their hair and it's got that really pretty glow, but it's not, yeah. I want to still see a background. I don't want it to just be blown out back there as well. So yes, totally. And if the sun was directly behind them, you get, you start to get those like sun flares and, and you lose yes. contrast in your lens and there's all that weird stuff. Right. Are you also like using your hand at the front of your lens Never. to block anything? Never. No. Okay. Nope. Got it. Never using my hand. I actually have seen people do that, which is actually 
I feel like I need to look into that for like weddings and big groups together. That's such a good idea. I've, I've never even tried that. Honestly, I think for me, before I even put a subject where it needs to go, especially with anything, my kids or clients at all, I'm always like making sure that the sun is where it needs to be, which is not directly behind them because those sun flares are beautiful. And I think sometimes they work like right here, this, it worked yeah. pretty there, but the sun was really low. As you can see, it's mm -hmm. like right there through the bus. So yeah. It worked for me in the trees, you know, that helps as well. So, and the sun is like, I love these little arrows. I'm going to overuse them probably, but yeah, this is cool, isn't it? So, uh, so yeah, the sun is behind, actually the sun is probably like right there, right at the very edge of the, of the bus, right? Like somewhere yep. right here. Yep. So and we're getting I just like kind some of flare. Down but... And I, you know, I made sure that, so this is going to sound really weird. And some people might watch us and be like, this girl has no clue what she's talking about. But um, whenever I shoot the sun through like a bus or something like this, I always try to kneel down and I always like go up and down when I'm shooting uh -huh. and I just snap a bunch of images. And then that way that I know that I got the shot and I'm not just, you know, clicking one or two and then just hoping that yeah. it worked out. I'll just take a million. And then this, that's exactly how I got this one because I wanted some sun flare to come through, but I didn't want it to cover the top of the bus right there, which is, this was actually one of my favorites that I got in my I girls. Love, I love this photo. It's great. And, uh, you know, I, I would say I, I often see, like, when you post photos, um, someone will ask, like, did you use flash? Did you use any kind of lighting or reflector? Did you use anything like that never. in this photo? No. Okay. I never use any anything outdoors. I never use the flash. And I never use reflectors either not for seniors or anything I usually just try to, with my seniors I try to just bounce the light off of like an area which I usually wouldn't shoot a senior in like this type of environment anyways it's very yeah. green this but it's, this place in particular was really it's green in, it's interesting like right in here we've got oh wow it made it like a perfect circle that's cool I kind of like the rough circle okay so this the van itself is providing like open shade right for your children like right. like like the sun is behind it the van is like providing basically like a stage of open shade and then you're overexposing from say like what you would have back here right correct like like well, this is a little have, bit overexposed yes so if i i i wish i would have post some before and afters these actually i I would probably say that I undershot a little bit more just so that whenever, so I could get that sun coming through. And then whenever I brought it up, I think a lot of um, issues that I used to have when I first started photography was I was always trying to shoot the lighting correct on my camera. And then I was always trying to edit and it was always super bright and I was losing a lot of the light, which it is kind of blown out in some areas in the background right there. But you yeah. know, that's what I, I like this. This is like a happy medium. Me um, but in these, I undershot actually, I would say a tad. So then that way, whenever I brought it up and then I could edit the greens a little bit better and it wasn't super blown out. So I mm. would say that I got that sun flare under shot a little bit. And then that way, when I brought everything back up, it all kind of goes together. Cause that's what I've kind of learned. I mean, I really used to think, I mean, when I first started, I would definitely say that I would try to correct every single time on camera. Cause that's what I was told yeah. was to just shoot correct on camera every single time and then that way it makes editing easier which now i disagree you know because now that i've found my style now that i know that you always want to underexpose because if you're always you know overexposing you can't fix it later it's done it's those images yeah, are gone, there's so. there's no detail in the right. if it's pure white it's right. gone so right especially in situations so i i often when people ask how, for example, the presets, should I overexpose, underexpose? I'm usually like just normal exposure. Right. But in a, in a situation like this where, where you are maximizing the range, like you've got, you know, the sun is like completely a fireball, you know, it's going to be white. Uh, and you're, you're trying to get detail from the sky in the background, at least a little bit, all the way to the front where they're, if, if, if you were to shoot for like the sky, they would be a silhouette. Right. But, and, and you're shooting somewhere on the lower end so that later you can bring it back up. Right. In Lightroom or capture one. Um, right. And bring it, yeah, bring it back up. Got it. Right. Okay. Well, yeah. and even if I was shooting, um, you know, with a 2470, I feel like it would be different 
too, because if you underexpose too much, I feel like on a super wide lens, especially like in this, like I, I actually use my 2470 in a few of these images and mm -hmm. you know, it's really hard sometimes to pull the, pull those highlights back up. Like I feel like it doesn't, it doesn't look the same as if, if you use, you know, like a 51.4, the lighting is just totally yeah. different. So, mm -hmm. um, in these images in particular, like the ones in the bus and things like that, I really tried to use my 51.4. And of course, like, you know, my second child was blurred out in the background. Um, a few people said oh. that and whenever I posted those, um, oh, yeah. that's just um, my style. That's what I like, you. you know, yeah. very journal journalistic. Vibes. That's really cool. Yeah. And what, what, uh, just as, as an aside, what, what preset or styles are you using for like the color ones and the black and white ones? Do you stick to like one in particular or do you yeah. move around? So for family photos, it's always a little bit different. So this right here, this is Fuji pushed. I actually use Fu Fuji pushed all the time, which is, you yeah. know, I just basically, you know, I bought the presets. I really liked it, but in every lighting different, different situation, it's obviously a little bit different. So for me, I just saved a bunch of them, especially for my kids, because my kids are um, Samoan Chinese and then me. Um, oh, so cool. editing their skin tones are a little bit easier, I would say, than if I put my Fuji pushed on someone who's a little bit more fair skin like me. Um, you know, and Edgar, Edgar, I don't even know how to say that, but anyways, it looks really great on somebody like them, on my kids, e because they're really Ektar. dark skin. Ektar, yeah, yes. I know, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I knew I would mess up saying that at one point. No, too. no, so, it's okay. So these are a mix though. They're all different. I have um, both packs and then my black and whites um, are all saved just from, you know, I bought the presets and then I didn't want them to just look like everyone else's photos. I wanted them to be my own. You know, I don't, Mm -hmm. I don't shoot film. Um, I like the digital, I like the film look, but you know, I still want to keep it. I like the film vibe, but I want it to yeah. be more me and less like other people and less just like film. I wanted it to be my own style. So that's um, cool. Yeah. It's very interesting. Yeah. They're all um, a little bit, a little bit different. Like you can tell I used like on the ones on the inside were a little bit different than the ones on outside. Like that one, right there with the bus, like of them walking in front of the bus, that's definitely Fuji pushed. I can always tell by the greens. Uh huh. So yes, just use them in different situations with a lot of tweaks all the time. Yes. Yeah. 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 No, you, you, you make it work for you, like how you want it to be. Right. Um, so, okay. So back to, back to kind of the original, the original topic, which is, you know, really like taking advantage of photographing your family, you know, during coronavirus. Um, what kind of restrictions are you in and how has that like shifted your focus to your family? Like you, you're saying you weren't able to shoot before you weren't able to really shoot anywhere cause it's kind of shut down. Um, right. has, has that, has that impacted how much you shoot your family? Are you shooting your family more now? Yes. I feel like this has changed. Obviously. I mean, we weren't, we weren't allowed to shoot anywhere for, I believe it was like six weeks total. And then this is the first time that I went out and shot anything. And I always try to use opportunities whenever I'm slower to photograph my kids because I actually learn a lot from photographing my own kids because there's no pressure. Yeah. And I feel like in no pressure situations, I feel like that's really when you, you know, you learn a lot about posing and what to do with my clients you know, later on, I can kind of use that for my paying clients. So, um, we have had restrictions, you know, we live at the beach. So obviously the beaches were closed. We weren't allowed to go to the beach. So I just, this session, I was like, you know what, I've got to get out of the house. I've got to go shoot the kids and yes, I'll photograph them at home, but I don't usually post those. Those are usually for myself, but like these kind of sessions, you know, I would, if I was busy right now, which is, this is normally the busiest time of my year here in Florida. Yeah. And no, I probably wouldn't have went out and did this session of my kids. So it's actually a blessing in disguise because, you know, being busy sometimes, you know, you're, they're your kids. So when you're with your kids, you want to just spend yeah. time with your kids. You don't usually plan shoots with your kids. So totally. I feel like this was a blessing in disguise for sure, for taking my kids out and being able to shoot them more often than normal. Yeah. Are there, are there, are there any uh, tricks or anything that you're learning uh, shooting your kids that you think you'll bring back to your other work, like when things fully reopen? Well, I feel like that just goes back to my, you know, my, 
vision of being more journalistic rather than, you know, the post mm -hmm. pictures. I, I have learned that with my own kids, you know, back in the day when I first started, especially shooting families, which is what I was normally going to do. I was never going to shoot weddings. It was just going to be family photography. Yeah. Um, I have learned that with kids, they're all, I mean, they, especially kids you don't know, and you're going into a session and the kid has never seen you before and you've got a camera in your hand. It's just really awkward. Um, yeah. and I feel like they go off of your vibe and your mood. So I feel like you have to be on point the whole time. Um, kids love attention. Like they love everything to be about them the whole time. So I feel like yeah. when I photograph families, especially like as soon as the kid gets out of the car, I'm like on them the whole time, you know, just to get them comfortable with me. And, um, well, one thing I will say for photographing my kids that I've learned and that I do use photographing my own family or my own clients is, you know, kids won't do good the whole time. You know, sometimes yeah. they will, but most of the time they won't, they get bored and you know, that's usually whenever I use the time to just kind of get like the candid shots, you know, um, mm -hmm. when the parents are getting frustrated because you only have an hour with your family to photograph them, you know, they're getting impatient. And that's usually whenever I step off and I'm like, okay, well let your kid, you know, play in the sand and do all those things. And then I just use that time to just get the candid shots and less, you know, trying to get them to do all these poses, which is, you know, really something hard. that I'm not really into anyway. I, yeah. I'll get them in an area and then I'll pose them. But you know, if the kid's doing their own thing, then we tickle them. We kind of just go into the next thing. I never try to just stay in one place at all the time because I feel like that's yeah. when it goes downhill because kids don't do well in situations like that. You really have to keep them going. You have to keep their interests. You have to let them do their own thing sometimes unless, you know, come do this and pose because it just never works out super great that way. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I thought it was interesting, like even for your own kids, like they have ice cream. Yeah. So you, you've given them an activity to do in this right. location that you've already set up. Right. right. So, so, so now you've created the environment for like really beautiful photos that feel editorial, but they're also unposed or I mean, they're, they're also like natural. Right. Uh, which is really, really cool. Um, That's why I love, you know, I'm not a super big prop person. Um, I usually tell my clients like for first birthdays and stuff, um, to not bring too many props, but little things like that really make a difference, you know, something for them to do something else for them to kind of distract themselves. It feels less than, you know, just showing up to a photo session and being like, okay, Hey, everybody just sit here and smile, you know, kids, you know, or give them a snack. And then, you know, I just feel like those things never really work out. I feel like keeping them, you know, busy, and excited about, you know, like ice cream. I feel like that's always, a yeah. I know no, everybody can't just travel around with ice cream, but you know, just those little things think outside the box for little kids. And then it really makes a difference. So. Is there, is there any, uh, is there any kind of like special trick you have to get things back on track? If kids start to melt down or cry or freak out. That's usually whenever I come in and I'm like, okay, I think we need to just give them a break for a minute and let them do their own thing. They usually always bounce back. I mean, unless a kid is like sick and you know, sometimes that happens. Um, parents that know their kids are sick and then they're sick and they're just whining the whole time or teething or anything. Um, but usually even then, I mean, if you just give them a minute or just, you know, step away for a second, get, use that time to get pictures of the parents or, you know, mom hugging the baby and just get those kind of pictures. I mean, you really can use that time, even if they're being cranky or acting out or anything. I think that they really just need breaks sometimes. I think that's a long time for pictures is an hour of pictures to us. Doesn't sound like a long time, but to kids, it's a really long oh, time to a kid. It's eternity. It's it is like, a long yeah. time. And briberies only work for like the first 15 minutes or like before you get yes. out of the car and they've already forgotten. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah. And they can, they can be doing really well and go from really well to like freaking out to doing Absolutely. really well again. I mean, I have, I have clients all the time who are like, my kid never smiles for pictures. Like good luck in one smile out. And I'm like, just bring them on. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah. What yeah. Yeah, do. yeah. Yeah. There are, there are different, differing levels of expectations going into family shoots. I imagine like maybe the, the mom or the dad is thinking, okay, I need to get that like perfectly manicured, you know, family photo yep. where everyone is like perfectly positioned and they may get frustrated that it's hard to get there. Right. But, but they also don't realize that that's not the only way that you can get a beautiful photo of your family. Absolutely. Like, there's, 
other, I mean, they all have their place. Like, yes, it would be nice to have that for the grandparents and stuff like that. But, um, I like but at the end using... of the day, you know, your favorite photos are usually the ones where, you know, not everybody's perfectly smiling or whatever, because that's your family. Yeah. I mean, regardless, you know, me, yeah. I have friends who will take a picture of my kid. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I love that picture. You know, it could be the most like random photo, but I do think a lot of parents have high expectations because they're investing a lot of money into family photos and oh, yeah. you know they want those perfectly smiling shots but you know sure. i tell all my clients and every family that i photograph you know in the very beginning i won't start with the smiling shots i feel like i mainly just focus in the very beginning us getting to know each other um mm -hmm. you know a lot of just the kids by themselves or a kid by themselves and then we'll get into the smiling ones once they've been around me for a few more minutes because yeah. i feel like in the very beginning you know, they're not just going to stand there and smile. And even if they do, it's not a genuine smile. And then it just ends up being, you know, yeah. just forced. Yeah. And I just, that's not really my thing. So. Yeah. And kids can really dig in and be like, oh, you want me to do this? I'm going to do the opposite exactly. because I yeah. want to test you. Right. Right. Um, so I've, I've been seeing also, we don't have any photos in, in this group uh, that, that, that I have set up for screen share, but I've seen in a lot of photos that you're appearing in the photos. Like yes. you're, you're, you're also like putting yourself into the photos and are you doing this? Uh, are you doing this with a tripod or have you been teaching your husband how to shoot more or it's, it's really cool. My husband definitely takes photos of me and my kids all the time. So if he, so basically what I'll do is I'll just fix my settings and then he'll just take the photo and he's actually really good at light. I feel like that's the cool thing about being a photographer's husband is that you're kind of, you're just kind of pushed into getting to know photography because yeah. I'm a big believer in like being in the shots too. I don't always post them, but I feel like you've got to be in them too, even though you're yeah. not getting a photo session done. I feel like it's important to have your husband take photos on a camera, not just on a cell phone so that you can be in them as well, which is not very often, but you know, when we're all together, you. I'll have him take one of me and the kids, but yeah, I don't even own a tripod. So it's, it's definitely my husband yeah. if I'm in them or I'll have my friend take our photos and then I'll edit them, which is a blessing too. having a lot of photography, um, friends, they'll take the photos and be like, here's the memory card. And then I'll be able to edit them, which is really nice. So. Yeah, that's really important. A lot of people don't don't get enough photos of themselves. Like, uh, yeah, I I probably have like ten in the last ten years of myself. Yes, that's uh, a problem. Yeah, that's a problem. Totally. Um, okay, so yeah, uh, my one of my my last question, I guess, is with the work that you're doing now with your family, are you going to be using any of this to re remarket your family photography when things are, are lifted? Like, are, are you pulling this into your marketing? Cause they're yes. beautiful shoots. So every time I photograph my kids, um, it actually benefits my business all the time, just because, I mean, people see like this right here, the shoot with the Volkswagen and the ice cream. Um, someone already booked a shoot doing that with their kids as well. And I've already done one. So it actually works out great. So I'm getting photos of my kids, but it also benefits me and my business. Um, but I think no matter what I, I post them and then I feel like they always get like a really good, you know, feedback from photographing my kids. So I always try to make sure to post them on my business page and everything like that. So I'm not just benefiting, benefiting it from myself. That's great. Okay. So to, to kind of wrap things up, is there a piece of advice that you have for the community in getting, you know, uh, upping your family photography game, like something big that you learned or something that you think would help people? Well, I think my main thing is to stop comparing yourself to others. I feel like that's really, you know, I see even myself, I mean, I, all the time, even still, I'll see like a session or something that someone did so great. And I'm like, Oh man, like, I wish, you know, I was that good. Or I had that. And I feel like once I get step back and I get my mindset out of the comparison and, um, stop looking at other photographers, like they're so great. And I'm not unless, you know, yeah. I, you know, everybody, everybody in that group, I mean, they post and a lot of people always post like without no confidence. And I'm like, these are some of the best images that I've ever seen in my entire life. So I think yeah. comparison is really, I mean, that's really the breakthrough of anyone being successful. I feel like you have to stop comparing yourself to others because we're all so different. I mean, this is 
this is being an artist. This isn't just, you know, you're taking photos and you're trying to be like this person or trying to, you know, edit. Editing is a little bit different, but I feel like, you know, once you just kind of look at someone and get inspiration and less trying to compare yourself and make yourself feel more down about yourself, I feel like that's when, that's probably my best advice to anybody. Cause I used to do the same thing. So. Yes. And it robs you of a lot of joy when you're it comparing does. yourself. It does. Yeah. It does. Because yeah. anyone can do anything. We're all the same. So. Yes. Yeah. And, and I think by following your own, your own vision, like that's how you've been able to define your, your voice. Like it, it's very easy to spot one of your photos, uh, in the, that's you know, awesome. inside Thank the you. community. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's about all we have time for today. I did want to ask where can people find you online if they want to see more of your work? So my Instagram is Kayla Baptista photography and, um, my website is Kayla Baptista photography, LLC.com. And that's pretty much it. Those are the only two that I use besides Facebook. So. Got it. Okay. Awesome. Great. Thank you. All right. Thanks for uh, coming onto the show and thank you for uh, having me. Yeah, no, my pleasure. And it's been really, really fun. And, uh, I'm so happy to be able to like, let you speak to everybody, um, live. It's really fun. So thank you so right. much. Yeah. Thank you. And yeah, happy, hope you have a great day and have some great shoots.